So hey YouTube, this is Wheelchair21, and we're probably going to need to uh, edit this video a lot. As you can see, this is the review for my first ever Ultra Act Ultraman Tiga. Originally, I was supposed to have Skyform Darkform. Due to complications, I canceled the order. Um, I plan to get them later on, and we'll eventually review probably at least Skyform and Powerform. I'm probably going to skip Darkform, unless I actually get like the first round bonus still when I order them, which I think I won't. Just, I might, who knows. Um, this Ultraman Tiga, when you got the first round, came with a small little guts wing, which I actually do enjoy. It's pretty cool. Um, pretty, I would say, into scale with the figure of how it would be in the show. And at first, when I was joking around, it kind of looks like a Pokemon badge. There's not really much you can describe about it other than that all of its color and detail is practically on it on the top and on the bottom. Nothing but, you know, made in China and stuff like that, and a few other details that weren't, were commonly seen in the show, and you'd see a blow thing. This also can go on a usual Ultra Axe stand to be displayed next to, uh, Tiga. Um, the Ultraman Tiga figure, uh, is pro probably the one reason why I kinda got into Ultra Axe, because I actually do like Tiga. Um, I got, started watching it as a small kid, uh, well, quite younger kid, watching it, on the four kids fox box didn't realize how crappy it was until i got a couple of years older and rewatched it um i eventually found on the internet a whole slew of ultraman tea of the season watched it enjoyed it and fell in love with the figure the figure is different than most um figures like made by tamashi made by uh bandai japan by the fact that it has most of the same figures figure joints as a as a fig art, it has the ball joint foot, the joint in the foot here, as you can see, uh, double knees, but it's bending, its ability to bend the knee is almost better than a regular fig art, uh, the leg joint, the arm, body joint, the real difference here is, unlike the, um, comp, the Sentai fig arts that were just recently made, this one's actually on a ball joint swivel system, it's quite better, it's more like a common Rider shoulder. But it doesn't have the weird spin because now you can actually turn the whole arm like this instead of having that little joint under it that could break a fig art and such. You can actually turn the arm to make it more realistically into fighting, doing bends like this, and like shooting it out to fly. The head itself actually has one of the coolest joints ever. It actually has a uh, real like flip joint like that and the neck turns to make you actually swivel the head. So you can do pretty weird weird things. I mean, the neck's pretty long when you elongate the head. It kind of looks freaking too huge for a normal human. Um, and that's about it. That I can say is, like, the head swivel. Uh, his whole bad body from the neck down has, like, this cool spine, which is usually the zipper of the suit. And that's how they usually tried to hit it, was, like, a spine, because you can actually see a crease in this to see where, like, the zipper would be on the real suit. The, um, golden armor is really one of the cool parts about Tiga, which a lot of people probably don't or do like about it. I mean, the figure, it kind of gets a little floppy sometimes and bends a bit in the front because there's a little excess, and other times uh, it just stays perfectly. One of the major problems that people have been um, really uh, bitching about, uh, over-dramatizing, is the fact that, see all this blue on the Tiga? A lot of people are like, it looks purple, it looks more purple. Mine looks dead on blue. The box actually shows it as a purple. I mean, the background of the box here shows a purple. Um, I really have nothing to say against it, because at times it can look blue and it can look purple. I mean, just don't bitch and go with the flow, man. So there's something people don't know sometimes. I mean, the quality of the f filming that they used back then was different than the f quality they use now. I mean, a lot of people also bitched about the eyes at first. I didn't really bitch about the eyes at all. I didn't see anything to complain with. Uh, stuff Ultraman Tiga comes with are stuff that are stuff that's pretty cool and pretty weird. Like one of the things it comes with is a uh, handshaking hand. It's supposed to be between him and Ultraman Hayata. Um, I don't have Hayata. I don't plan to get Hayata. Um, but I plan to somehow use this hand someday for some stupid picture. Uh, other stuff it comes with is there's a difference in how his flight hands look from his blast hands. A flight hand will have a thumb in, such as so, and is mirrored for both sides. This is a flight hand. 
and his blast hand is more like a karate chop. This is usually used for the Spectrum Space Drum Ray, as people like to uh, mispronounce, because Spectrum was the original one. Space Drum, Spectrum, something is usually uh, Tiga's Ray. Each na name has like a slight variation, or is exactly the same name for their final attack. And also a grasping open hand thing that usually uses for like the small mini blast that Tiga would shoot from the one arm. Like, maybe a kind of, in a sense, like, the energy charge from one form out the other, or some of the other hands it has. Um, this energy blast, I always, I, I kind of call it a sky arrow, because it looks more t similar to a sky bolt that he uses in sky form. And it, it's blue like this, it looks like a blue crystal, and then it has a clear plastic extension to it, so it actually is an effect part, which is amazing. I, I enjoy it. I, I don't. I kind of think it might break if there's a lot of force put into it, which I probably shouldn't right now, like you see me pushing my thumb down on it, on this angle. I probably shouldn't, might break it, um, and that would be stupid on my behalf. Um, and it's actual finishing blast, the Spectrum Spectrum Ray that he usually uses in the show. Um, in the show there was a little bit more color, a little bit not. Um, it goes down the arm like, the, the, uh, this way, I believe. I usually forget. I have to usually check it when I'm putting on the figure. And I gotta pause this review, or I'm just gonna go around it and edit out this part of the review. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna edit this part out. Uh, I'm gonna pick up the phone. Um, another part of the figure as I'm trying to edit this camera. Okay, so anyways. Anyways. Camera, stay still. Another piece that comes with it, which I don't like usually displaying, is his, uh, the life detector, the life scanner. I always forget the actual name of this thing. It's a little red thing, similar to the blue thing on his chest from when he dies. It comes out pretty easily. It's a small little red peg on the back. On the blue one, it's a blue one. Pulls out, pops in. It's sometimes difficult depending on how hard you forced in the last one. So when you switch it, you might have a little struggle with putting in, in the, Life, life scanner for Tiga. The life bar, in a sense. Um. Uh, I don't know which I should pose it in, really. I don't think I need to pose it in flight form since I have no stand. I think I should at least display it with its, uh, energy blast. So I'll do that real fast. So this is what Tiga kind of looks like. Now, as you can see, the camera... Ah! Anyways. Yes. Use the force of the power of the other hand. The magical hand of Ryder Visored. Well, anyway. The Tiga Blast kind of looks like this when extended, when it, on display. It's it's a cool stand. Uh, not stand. It's a cool effect. I like it. I like it more than the actual Spectrum Ray. I find it more appealing. Um, much more appealing and better. He also comes with that, like, little orb thing you see over there. It's a, actually his energy shield. This thing is his energy shield. Uh, I don't like it. It's pretty floppy. It looks easy to break and crack. It's, and it also has the soapy water material that uh, Hypercopito's wings have. Now, a lot of people are going to bitch, oh, we like the Hypercopito wings. I don't. I freaking don't. Because it looks soapy like this disc. It doesn't look anything like it would in the show. Uh... And I showed part of my room, which was fig arts and a shelf and shelf and shelf. And stop moving. I hate this camera. It always moves because it's fucking cord. It never wants to stay still. Just, just stay right there. What's the worst that this camera can do by staying where it's supposed to stay? It just doesn't respect its authority. Doesn't respect the authority at all. Just doesn't respect authority. Ah. So when you put on the spectrum ray, the first thing you usually need to do though is damn. Stop showing my fan an awesome shelf of Godzilla figures. God. The first thing you need to do is slide over, and then you usually attach the arm. Which is I almost picked up the wrong arm. Still have the wrong arm. Which arm do I have? I don't have the right finger. God damn it. Gotta go grab the other arm. Wasn't planning this correctly. So now I got the right chopping hand. 
and I'll put it on the peg. Then you just switch, switch the other hand on the other arm. As so, and then you try to get him into the pose that he does in the show, the little cross forearm blast. The arm blast for his spectrum, space room ray. I actually enjoy how he does the ray. I, I always did it the wrong way, which is technically not the actual Tiga way, but I did it one of the other um, Ultraman ways. It's most likely more common to Mabius's blast. Which is the actual hand wave. Uh, the arm will get loose over time. The, on the arm will get loose over time and it'll lap around like a freaking fan, so it's easy to pimp slap people with it, as you can. Yeah, so it gets annoying if you don't have it on too secure. And, I mean, for me, this figure is pretty awesome. I'm, I plan to get a few more Ultra Axe, not a lot. I'm not a huge Ultraman fan, but I do enjoy it and respect it just for the fact that it was made by, um, uh, Edgy Tetsubaraya, I love, uh, the certain seasons, I don't love all seasons, and it's difficult to get me hooked on to, most likely, a majority of the Showa. Uh, I, I like Taro, I like Seven, I like Hayata, and, and when it comes to the newer seasons, it's mostly Tiga, Gaia, and Nexus. Um, I haven't seen a lot of Gaia, I've seen more of Tiga than anything from the Hey Sarah, and I enjoy Tiga. It was a really great season. It was quite enjoyable. Um, the design of the figure really um, is red and blue and silver. You can almost say he's the Tiga of America. The way he's so patriotic with his colors. Yes. Even though I kind of joke, it's because also Tetsubrai always wanted a blue Ultraman and not a red Ultraman to start off the series. But due to the blue screen effect, they couldn't really work it out well. That's a fun fact some people might not know. Um, anyways, this figure, I plan to upload this review as soon as I get a chance to. I've been delaying it, and because I just feel like I can goddamn delay whatever I want, since uh, I have no reason to keep uploading. That's my pace. I go as I want to. I do as I do. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I really don't know how to go full into detail on an old track figure, because this is my first one. Uh, most likely the next one I will ever get or review has more detail in on this, and I'll be able to go in full depth of just a little bit more on what I like about Ultra X, since this is only one of several to come. One of, not several, but a few more to come. Uh, anyone who's willing to buy Ultra Act exclusives, you're nuts. Because some of these exclusives so far are crap. Except Golza. Golza's not crap, but technically I think there's four exclusives, but anyways, I'm gonna go, and I'll see you later, YouTube. Check out for a uh, Shanking Gold review. Bye.